Good morning and welcome to Worship with Mountain Shadows Presbyterian Church on this Sunday, June 14th, 2020. I'm Reverend Rachel Srubas and I'm grateful that together we are united in one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God of us all. We have also entered into the season in the church's life called Ordinary Time. It is the long season that stretches without the peaks of high holy days. It is called ordinary time because that is a way of numbering days between those special sacred holidays and seasons. But of course, we are all keenly aware that we are living in extraordinary times. We are living in times in which our need for God, our looking to God is perhaps keener than ever. So let us begin our worship today with a prayer that speaks to these times, even though it was written many decades ago by Toyohiko Kagawa. Let us pray. O God, show us clearly the heart of your kingdom we do not protest, even if our life is destined to lead to the cross or if the way leads to losing our lives. We will march in the face of distress and contrary winds. Teach us how to dispense with unnecessary things. Let us go forward without fear of death in order to fulfill our mission simply, surely, and steadily. Reveal to us our station clearly and strengthen us to teach and guide by our example all persons, even those who are ruled by evil. We pray that you may find us worthy to work through us. Amen. I'd like to express thanks to all of our church's members and friends for your continuing support of our congregation and its ministries during this extended time of social distancing and of the closure of our church facilities. May our hearts remain ever open to God. May we know that we are indeed connected with Christ through our faith, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us worship God. Hear the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. We know that the Lord is God, who made us and to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever in faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Thank you. 
Hear the call to confession. Do not let this invitation pass you by. Let the water of life come to you, quench your thirst, and wash your feet. Rest yourself under the shade of God's protective presence. Let your spirit be nourished by the bread of prayer. Be refreshed. Let us pray. When we are at our weariest and worst, O God, you are at your best. Your love for all people endures, lasting and sure. You are not moody or stingy with your kindness, though we fluctuate in our own faithfulness. Help us now to feel the constancy of your love and the certainty of your forgiveness, so we may be unafraid to let you see us as we are. You know the burdens we bear, the scars on our spirits, our heartaches and fears. You know our regrets, the choices we cannot reverse, the suffering we're so sorry to have caused, the suffering others have caused us. Heal us, God of love. Forgive us and help us endure. Holy Creator, you have made us in your image. Our character is not carved in stone, but built on our lifelong growth in your grace. Grant us hope greater than all disappointment through the gift of your Holy Spirit, who fills our hearts with Christ's love. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. As man, but now I see. that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing The Lord has promised good to me, and there's my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. 
and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior is ransom me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace unending love Hear these words of assurance. By faith we are restored to God, and now because of our Lord Jesus Christ, we live at peace. Christ has introduced us to God's kindness, and on that foundation we build our lives, gladly looking forward to sharing in God's glory. Amen. A Reflection on the Peace of Christ by Joan Chittister When we think that we can run our legs off, doing, going, finding, socializing, and still stay solid and serene in the midst of the pressure of it all, then we find ourselves staring at the ceiling one night and thinking, there must be more to life than this. Human beings need spiritual rest as well as physical rest. When life is at its most frantic, most frightening, we each need a place to go to, a place that wraps us around in silence and calm. No matter who we are or what we do, we need some place we have put aside, a small, simple place we have designated as our doorway to peace, where we can sink into ourselves and find the God who awaits us there. May the peace of Christ be with you. A reading from the Letter to the Romans Suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. Jesus said, As you go, proclaim the good news 
The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. There is a bit of popular psychological wisdom that suggests pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. What this means is we have a choice, even when we're hurting. We can choose the way we think about our pain. We can choose how we respond to our pain, what we do with it. Sometimes we forget that we can choose well. Sometimes when we're hurting, we tell ourselves stories that make the pain worse. And that's where the suffering really takes hold. Dan Major is a psychotherapist and a writer who says, the progression from pain to suffering is essentially as follows. Pain leads to negative thoughts and beliefs, lead to feelings of frustration, anger, anxiety, fear, sadness, depression, hopelessness, lead to suffering, leads to muscle tension and stress, lead to more pain, leads to increased negative thoughts and beliefs lead to increased frustration, anger, anxiety, fear, sadness, depression, hopelessness, leads to greater suffering, and so on. How different that understanding of pain and suffering is from the Apostle Paul's understanding of suffering. In his letter to the Romans, Paul says, Suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Paul claims that suffering can be productive, while many present-day mental health practitioners say quite the opposite. So what is a faithful psychologically healthy way for us as Christians to understand suffering. There are many ways to understand it. We can't cover them all today, but here are some ways to think about it. First, we have to acknowledge that Jesus suffered. He suffered grief when his friend Lazarus died. Jesus suffered moral pain when he saw people who were already poor and pushed to the edges of society being exploited, insulted, and denied a life of dignity. Jesus suffered spiritually, especially in the face of social systems that fell far short of God's vision of justice for which the Hebrew prophets had cried out. After doing all he could in his lifetime to honor and bless and free the suffering people of his society, Jesus was wrongly accused of insulting God and inciting political rebellion. And then he suffered the ultimate agony of public crucifixion. 
any Christian conversation about suffering must necessarily keep the cross of Christ at its center. The cross is empty now, but once it bore the body of the suffering servant of God. How in light of Jesus' ministry, suffering, death, and resurrection may we understand our own suffering and that of our neighbors? Viktor Frankl can help. He was a prominent Jewish psychiatrist. He lived in Vienna, Austria, until he and his wife and his parents were arrested and transported to a Nazi concentration camp in September of 1943. After his grueling three-year-long imprisonment, during which his parents and his pregnant wife died in the camp, Frankel wrote, during a period of only nine days, a book that came to be a classic of 20th century literature. The book is called Man's Search for Meaning. It is meaning, Frankel argued, that makes suffering endurable, and we might even say productive. Frankel wrote, the way in which we accept our fate and all the suffering it entails, the way in which we take up our cross, gives us ample opportunity, even under the most difficult circumstances, to add a deeper meaning to our life. For Frankel, then, the question is not, will we take up our cross? We all have our cross to bear. And the pain of bearing it is inevitable. The question is, how will we carry our cross? How we carry our cross makes the difference between a cycle of pointless, bitter, ever-worsening suffering and a life of purpose that, despite its pain and losses, is rich with meaning. The cross of Jesus Christ has meaning for Christians because even while he was being forced to carry it, even while he was being nailed to it, even while he was dying on it, Jesus did not let the obscene violence and hatred of his crucifiers reduce him to the level of condemning them in return. In the most supreme act of making meaning out of undeserved suffering, Jesus prayed for and he forgave the very people who tortured and killed him. He carried and he bore his cross with an ultimate nonviolent humility. And that demonstrated to this world God's unfailing mercy by carrying his cross and refusing to retaliate against his crucifiers, Jesus did not accept punishment from God. No, that is a tragic misreading of the cross. Jesus gave his life, and he died showing us that even when we deserve God's condemnation, God refuses to lash out at us in rage, but rather weeps for us in love. To follow Jesus, to be his disciple, is, especially when we are in pain, to act with self-restraint and mercy so that we do not inflict our suffering on anybody else. That's very difficult. It's a tall order. 
and at times we fail. How many times in your life have you felt the sting of a suffering person's behavior who knew only how to make you suffer too? How many times have you lashed out or put down someone else or a whole community of people because you were in pain and you were flailing to make that pain go away? How many times? Nobody wants to tally, tally up those numbers. Not even God, whose mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. God does not keep score against us. That's the meaning of Christ's resurrection and forgiveness. That's the meaning of his great and liberating resurrection words to us. Peace be with you. That's the meaning of his teaching, love your enemy, don't get back at your enemy. Don't go for an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. Don't retaliate. Don't tolerate abuse either. Some causes of suffering are purely malevolent such as child abuse, or spousal abuse, or racist hate crimes. These are evil acts. They are preventable and they must be stopped, not endured. It's not a virtue to tolerate abuse. If you are being abused, do not tolerate it. Seek help. And if you need help seeking help, please talk to me. I will help you. The suffering that can be productive, the suffering that produces endurance, that produces character, is the inevitable, unpreventable pain of the human condition made meaningful by the power of choice. For example, my friend Joe's late wife died from Alzheimer's disease. After she died, he chose to volunteer with the Alzheimer's Association. He chose to take the pain of dementia and grief and loss and submit that pain to the redemptive rigors of service to his neighbor. And you can bet that by doing so, Joe experienced that suffering becomes endurable and by doing so, by enduring that suffering, his own character was built up. Serving others strengthened Joe's hope, his hope that there really is life beyond loss. Joe learned that there is meaning to be made from suffering, even from the ravages of a dreaded brain disease. What meanings will we make from the disease of COVID-19? The meanings we make of this pandemic will depend on how we carry ourselves and carry one another through it. Will we strive to live with more care than fear, more endurance than impatience, more hope than despair, more compassion than self-interest. Faithfulness is often a matter of how we carry pain, our own pain and other people's suffering too. One thing we Christians are called to do with our pain is ask for help to carry it. 
Some of us hate to ask for help. And we need to look at the reasons why. Are we so proudly convinced of our imagined invulnerability that we're ashamed of needing help? Are we so much more comfortable being in control than in needing help that needing it dismantles our delusions of power? We may well need to live a little more or a lot more like the crowds around Jesus. They asked for help. When they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd, they didn't just grit their teeth and power through. They reached out to Jesus in the sheer hope that he could help. In Jesus, they saw a shepherd, a leader, a human being who didn't shield himself from people's pain, but allowed their pain to touch his life. And then he allowed himself, body and soul, to express the compassion of God. Sometimes the most faithful thing we can do is cry out to one another for compassion such as that. And sometimes when we're not hurting, so much, we are called to let other people's pain enter us deeply enough that our hearts can take gentle hold of it. And we find, thanks be to God, the courage to help them carry that pain. That's what compassion is, holding and carrying the suffering of another not as a martyr, not as a rescuer, but as a traveling companion through this life, as a sharer in life's joys, and as a fellow searcher for the meaning of its pain. May God guide us in that continuing search. Amen.
When we worship God, we give back to God a portion of what we have been given, a portion of our praise, a portion of our thanksgiving, and a portion of our blessing. We don't give to God hoping God will turn aside and notice us. We give to God because God has not only noticed us, but has embraced us and blessed us, anointing us as agents of God's radical love and hospitality in this world. There is so much work to do, and God is looking for co-laborers for God's kingdom. Let us pray. Loving God, you have called us to show our brothers and sisters what your love looks like. May the gifts we prepare to offer today sustain the ministries of your church, fueling faithful efforts to alleviate human suffering, providing drink for the thirsty, food for the hungry, rest for the weary, friendship for the lonely, hope for the hurting, justice for the oppressed, and a community of spiritual nurture for all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. O oh Lord our God, you are good beyond our understanding, and yet our world is not what we hoped it would be. It feels like we have been socially distant for years. Help us not to feel distant from you. We know you are with us, shaping us, molding us, changing us even through the crises that our country is going through and through the challenges that we face personally 
and in our families and communities. Even in our suffering, O God, your mercy through Christ reaches us. Christ has been with us, Christ is with us, and Christ will ever be with us. And so we are confident to lay before you, our God, every hope of our hearts. Hear our prayers for particular people in need of your mercy, your care, your love and kindness. We pray for communities of concern to us and to you. We pray for this nation as we struggle with disease and for this nation as we struggle for racial justice. We pray, O oh God, for you love the whole world, and we seek your mercy and blessing for all nations of the earth and the challenges they face. We pray for leaders and legislators to be led by your spirit of wisdom. We pray for the hurting earth and its healing, especially in places where wildfires burn and firefighters work to control them. We pray for the health and safety of all living beings. We lift up to you, our friends. And yes, O oh God, we pray even for our enemies. We pray for our beloved families, especially the ones we're not able to see in person these days. We pray for ourselves, for our own lives, for the help we need from you. And all of these our prayers, O oh God, we lift up in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Now, sisters and brothers in Christ, we have come to the end of our service of worship, but we have not come to the end of our service in the Lord's name and for the Lord's sake. So if you have help to give, give it. Give it safely. Give it generously, trusting that God will refill your cup. If you need to ask for help, ask for it frankly. Open yourself to receive the gifts and the support of others. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with us all. Together let God's people say, Amen.